What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope you're all having a great day. Sorry to be out yesterday. Um, I'm glad I was able to get a couple things up there in, in, the, in the lineups that I loaded on the site. Uh, fortunately, we're winning lineups, so hopefully you guys followed some of that, and hopefully everybody did well. I know we had shout out to Evan for uh, getting a win last night in the in the single entry, um, and I know some other people had some good nights, and the bets all hit as well. So check out TrueDFS.com. Please like the videos uh, and subscribe if you haven't. Check out our Discord for free for a limited time, and. Uh, yeah, let's get into today's slate. I'm going to do a really quick game by game, and this may substitute for my five for five. Sheets is gone for a few days on vacation. He's still going to update the projections as much as he can. We also do have the SaberSim partnership, so we have all of SaberSim's information on the site. So if you don't have Sheets' information, you have a great, great, great resource. Um, I would say Sheets and them are the best in the industry. So, and uh, a lot of it is overlapping, you know, some of the same information. Anyway, let's get into uh, today's slate. I'm going to share my screen, and we do go game by game for these first looks. It's kind of a giant slate to do that. So I'm going to keep a lot of the games really short. Dallas at Cleveland on, fan, on DraftKings. I think we are looking on the Dallas side. It's pretty much Luka or nobody for me. I am open to Brunson. There's just so many good plays in the slate and it's a bad matchup. But uh, that's just all I'm going to end up doing. I understand people want to talk about Kleber and all that. Um, I'm, it's fine. There's probably better value later in the day is the truth. On, with uh, Allen and Mobley both out on Cleveland, it does boost up Kevin Love for me. Um, I have a little bit of interest in him on FanDuel, on DraftKings, but much more on FanDuel at 5,300. I think Markkinen and Levert are in play, but not especially priorities for me today. Orlando, um, really not a whole lot I want to get involved with. They're spreading out the minutes. Even with these guys out, it's really hard to try to want to commit here. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them kind of gave us a big game if we got something out of out of Mo Bamba, but he's 6K now. If we got something out of Cole Anthony or Franz Wagner or Okiki, I just am having a hard time getting to a lot of it on this slate, to be honest. I have a lot more interest in the later games. On the Washington side, uh, Porzingis, if he plays, is viable, but not a guy who I'm trying to target. If he's out, we're going to probably want a lot more Abdia and Hachimura, who are fine anyway, as is Sadoransky, but and maybe even Kispert. But I, as of right now, I'm not treating this with a lot of priority until we hear if anybody else is out. Denver, uh, I think Jokic is always a great play. Um, he's 12-4, a little more expensive than Luka. It's a great matchup. They could smash him here. They may not need him to go nuts, nuts. Uh, Monty Morris would be the other guy I would consider. And then Indy, I just have a big question mark because of all the Q tags. Let's just wait to see what happens with this one. There's no reason to force judgment. We don't know what's going to happen before lock. So I don't want to try to speculate on a team that might be sitting like by the end of the day, like seven people. <laughs> um, so it, otherwise, I, th I think we're just sort of wasting time if we're trying to do that. So anyway, skipping that one uh, until later today. And Miami, Miami, Boston, I actually think this is a great shot, even in a bad matchup, to, to play a very low-owned Butler or Bam. I prefer Bam, um, but remember, the matchup is not the same as it was uh, difficulty-wise for the centers without Robert Williams, who literally has a – could be you could make a great case for that guy for Defensive Player of the Year with no Robert Williams – all of these guys uh, definitely get a boost for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm heavily interested here um, in, in, in the uh, Bam and Butler side of things, especially Butler, mostly on the theory that like, this is a really, really meaningful game. They're a half game up on the Celts. And they're, in those games, Butler has tend to take over a little bit. And I know he didn't have, you know, everybody was complaining about him the whole time the other night. And even in a blowout, he still got there in, uh, you know, in 34 minutes. It wasn't quite maybe the usage and everything we expect from him, but I do think in a, in a, in a tough matchup like this, you're going to see Butler, especially down the stretch, if it stays close. And I think he's going to come out, try to come out strong as well. Cause Boston is a tough matchup. I like playing good players in tough matchups. I've always said this Tatum and Brown, you'd assume are going to play here. I don't really know what they'd be doing by not. Um, but assuming that they both do play, uh, I pretty much am, you know, Jalen Brown, maybe, and I think Tatum may be in an important game, but I, I just have a hard time getting to it personally. So I'm assuming they both play, and I'm not really that interested in the Boston side of it, although I could certainly understand an argument for Tatum more so on FanDuel at 9,600. On, on uh, the, Charlotte, the, the Charlotte New York game, I think you could take a shot on LaMelo. We've seen the upside, you know, creep back up after uh, months of just none of it. Like, I mean, he, he wasn't getting the minutes as, as much run. He wasn't getting having the games. He was right in that 40 to 45 range. I think that, you know, this recent little burst from him is definitely worth taking a shot. I don't love the matchup for him, but I do think LaMelo's in play. Um, I don't mind if you want to do Rozier and Bridges on this giant slate. I'm not going to do it. Uh, on the Knicks side, I think that you could like, you know, Randall hasn't been good against these guys so far this year, but I think that this is the kind of matchup he should thrive in. So I am open to, to Randall. I'm very open to Bert, to Barrett, but the guys who I'm more interested in, especially if Fournier, who's uh, just got announced as questionable, 
if he's out, I definitely like going with quickly. I can see quickly having a big game in this matchup. Uh, no matter what the game result is, we know that he's got a wide range of outcomes, but I like this spot a lot for him. And I think that we'd want to get some heavy exposure there. I also wouldn't mind Alec Burks. So that's, that's sort of a, you know, again, we want to see, uh, I want to see what else we like first, but I do think that you're, there's definitely some argument for playing the Knicks side. I just find other plays that I'm looking for a little heavier. All of these Minnesota guys on FanDuel are like just incredible plays, especially well, Towns and Edwards being the, the two main ones. Towns is 8,900 over there. And I think he's a great play here at 9,600. Uh, it's tough always going to Toronto for any team, but they've been playing really well. And I, you know, outside of the Boston game, which Boston just kills everyone. So what can you do? So a couple down games from Towns is not going to keep me off of them. I love Towns tonight, and I don't think I'm going to be alone in that. I also like taking a long shot play on Edwards and Russ and uh, and Russell. Edwards is the kind of player who actually feels like he belongs on this Toronto team. Like they, they feel like you know the long, athletic, lanky, you know the the Barnes, Boucher, Siakam type of player. Um, I think there's some there's there's something he's sort of like an in between of of a guy who you just sort of expect to see on Toronto. So I just I don't know doesn't really mean much, but I'm just pointing it out. Van Fleet 7,400 on FanDuel. I think that's fine to take a shot on him over there. We haven't seen the really monster game from him lately, but I think at 7,400 on FanDuel, he definitely is interesting. And we've also seen, you know, they played Boston, so scratch that off. Tough matchup. You played Indiana, you won by 40. Scratch that off. Um, and then, you know, the, the Cleveland's a tough matchup. So I, I'm not throwing out every game, but I do think there's still enough upside for him on FanDuel at 7,400. Not going to be playing these guys heavily on DraftKings. The one I would look at is OG getting his minutes back. At 58 and 5,700 is definitely in play, but like the question is, do we really want to commit to that with what we're about to get into? Because this situation is going to be wild. Um, I'm very, very high on Sacramento and Charlotte. I'm sorry, and Houston both. And right now I have the priorities as DiVincenzo and Mitchell. Um, I like if you're not playing those two together to, to mix in a little, a little uh, uh, Barnes. And I think we want to consider the big men too. Uh, you've got, you know, Damian Jones a little bit more than you want to pay. Probably not the greatest situation. It is a great matchup against Houston, but probably not, you know, we don't feel totally secure with who's getting all the minutes. Metu gets a lot of the run. So I'm sort of mixing these guys in and out because I do think that there's obviously upside for each of them. And it's a great, it's like literally like the nut, nut matchup. So Metu, and then we also have uh, Trey Lyles, who I, who I have interest in as well. Again, sort of an up and down game log. We're used to it with him, but we know those 40 fantasy points can come and what a great game to stack this, this game. I mean, so I'm just going to be all over that spot, especially if Jeremy Lamb and Alex Len are out, just those guys would eat into some of those potential minutes for the other guys we talked about. If they're out, I really do want to have a ton of interest here. Um, Shangun, if he plays again, is going to be in basically 80% of my lineups uh, on both sides. He's 50, he's much cheaper, 5,800 on FanDuel, 69 on DraftKings. If he's going to, to, to play, he got hurt in the last game. Otherwise, he would have gotten there then, too. But even had he, you know, even though he, did, he didn't play, and he didn't play well, and he still had a, nearly a point per minute, uh, I think he could play 35 minutes if he does play. Now, would they want to do that with him? And then you get everything wild and opened up. Um, even without it, like Deshaun Tate and K.J. Martin are both in play. But if he's out, those guys become priorities. And, and Tate already, you could argue that he is. I also want one of Porter or Jalen Green in a good portion of my lineups with no Christian Wood in there against the Sacramento defense. And I don't even mind throwing in a Garrison Matthews and hoping the minutes return to him. But the main one is going to be Josh Christopher at 3,900. Gave him the run the other day because he played really well. I do think that the sites around the industry are projecting him a little bit higher on minutes than they should because those could easily go to Matthews. You see that's how it usually ends up breaking down in these situations. But the upside for Christopher is hard to ignore. So obviously, Christopher, a much stronger play than Matthews. But just throwing in a little Matthews because he's not going to be owned is interesting. I currently have like five players from this game and a good portion of my lineups on an 11-game slate to show you how much I like it. I probably end up with three or four by the time we get all the information from the day. But this is a game you want to target. You want to circle it and on both sides. It makes a ton of sense. And uh, yeah, so let's jump over to Atlanta. Uh, Trey Young at 11K is a little bit higher than I'd want to spend, uh, but you do have Gallinari out again. You have DeAndre Hunter questionable. Just the minutes and the fact that they're playing for something makes me a little bit interested here. Um, I like him better on at 10, on 10 at 10K on FanDuel. Same with Bogdanovich, 6,100 on FanDuel. Good, good matchup for Capella, who put up a nice game the other day. Um, all of these guys are, are very, very much in play for me uh, today. I just, I'm, not, I'm, I'm prioritizing Sacramento, Houston first, but I am definitely going to get some exposure here. Um, OKC on the other side, I think that with the pricing the way it is, I'm more looking at it on FanDuel, but we have to acknowledge that Roby certainly has a ceiling, right? Like, I mean, I know he's not going to shoot the ball that well and have that. He's, he just goes up. He just has wildly, you know, varying results in, in sometimes a lot of minutes, he'll do absolutely nothing. And other times you're like, Oh, if he only got 30 minutes, he would have put up like 50 and then he does put up 58. I mean, it's just, he's a, he's a very solid play. Um, 
but again, I'm not as as quite as targeted. I do like Maladon as well. Um, I just feel a little bit less on this than I thought I was going to be because they have more bodies. One sneaky play might be Lindy Waters, who could end up getting some run um, in, in a blowout. He could end up getting some run in a close game. Uh, nothing really that exciting from his game log outside the game against Denver. But you can see that, you know, he does have some upside and he's very cheap. So he's a guy we can consider using. In, with the Memphis San Antonio situation, um, I am just having a hard time getting to Memphis. If, if Jaron Jackson Jr. is out again, it still is hard for me to get to Memphis. They just have a lot of bodies they play. They're really good. Um, they are playing for to hold on to the three seed. San, San Antonio playing to hang in the playoffs. So finding a run back for, I'm going to make my case in a minute for, for a guy who I wouldn't usually at, at these prices. Uh, it's a little trickier on DK, especially without knowing what's going to happen with Jaron Jackson Jr., Everybody that's out is going to help us, um, but I, I, it's really, I'm really having a hard time figuring out where I really want to go. Uh, De'Anthony Melton is like that weird play, but doesn't feel right on a on a, this big of a slate. And you look at the minutes, and they don't make you feel good. But look at this result production. I mean, this guy just gets there all the time. It's crazy in no time. And if they one time gave him a few more minutes. Oh boy, he could just go completely nuts. Um, this is a great matchup too. Obviously for both sides, they both play fast. Should be a high scoring game. I will play DeJounte Murray on both sites at low ownership tonight. Um, they're playing. They need to win. I, I think that he's an interesting play. Uh, you know, some people will play Lucas. Some people will play Jokic. Some people play some of these other spend ups, you know, the towns and all these guys. I really do think Murray has a, has a chance of having just a monster, monster performance. He's the only guy I'm currently playing from San Antonio, but certainly wouldn't argue with you if you wanted to argue for a few other guys. Chris Paul has been incredibly productive and incredibly good. And this is a game that, you think that kind of matters to them and they're, they're, they're pretty much getting them into the playoff minutes. It's hard to know sometimes whether teams are going to slow players down right before the playoffs. Are they going to, to try to get them in their exact playoff minute role so they can try and be ready for it? It's, 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 it, it always varies. And, and the Suns you think would kind of be on the, you know, taking it easier side, but they are playing in golden state. They have a lot of pride. They don't get talked about as much as they should. They've had an unbelievable season. One of the all time, you know, in some ways, one of the all time great NBA seasons, when you consider Chris Paul missed 15 games, you had Booker missing games, you had eight missing games and, yet they're still going to have one of the better records in the history of the NBA by the time it's all said and done. So that's a really, really interesting spot. I also think Phoenix is dangerous to crush them here today. Um, Golden State has been terrible. Phoenix has been strong. Uh, I do think that, you know, Draymond has been terrible, but his price is so low on FanDuel. I think I might take some shots over there. And at, yeah, I think he's 4,900. That, that's pretty much a Wiggins is 55 over there. I don't mind that stuff, but I just think there's better spots on an 11 game slate to attack. One of the things I am going to buy into, and I don't think it's going to be overly popular, is McCollum going back to Portland. It's kind of hard, though, because it's not like it's not exactly revenge, right? Like Portland is, you know, they gave him the chance. They, they, they let them stay there for years longer than most people in the league thought they should have. He's going to get a warm reception, I would believe. If he doesn't, oh, boy, I, I, then I would look out for him. I still am going to look out for him anyway. At 8,800 on DraftKings, 8,300 on FanDuel. He will be in at least probably 30% of my lineups. I'm going to buy in. It's not just narrative-based. Portland also doesn't play defense. Uh, the ball is going to be in his hands, and New Orleans also desperate to win. So if Portland can hang in there at all, you're going to want some C.J. McCollum shares. Uh, and then on the Portland side, you can just see why we should try to find a way to have interest here. Uh, trying to find out who exactly it is, is really tough. I guess Keon Johnson feels safe for the minutes. They do have more bodies available. It's just, I expect somebody to go off and I don't have a good feel for who that's going to be. Uh, probably getting to a high point in a tough matchup for Eubanks. Um, Brandon Williams, the price is a little bit tough to get to, but I don't mind if you want to take shots with these guys. I just am personally not quite as high on it. Ellaby and guys like that are, and Keon Johnson are a little cheaper on Fandle. So maybe you want to get your exposure there. I'm going to do something that I'm probably, you know, going to get into a little trouble for if, if too many people watch this video. Uh, but I'm just going to show a real quick version because I do put, post my lineups every day on TrueDFS.com, my early builds. And I'm going to do a really quick screenshot of my FanDuel builds and get that in there just to give you an idea of what I'm doing that's different over there because we do need to talk a little bit more about FanDuel in general. I just figure every other site's covering it so much because FanDuel's got this whole marketing thing set up with all these other sites. But I did want to show you a quick little glimpse of what I'm doing. And I thought we talked it through when I went through my quick plays. I know this is uh, different than the way me and Cheats do. It's always going to be that way when I'm doing it alone because I like to get right to it, right to the point. And when we do ours, we're doing a first look sort of thinking it out, which is also, I think, really valuable. That's why I usually do my five and five. I probably won't do a five and five today because this is a close version of it. It's like a it's like a 20 and 10, actually, more like that. Um, but anyway, guys, let's have a great day today. I'll be live with you at 545 Eastern for at least a half hour and let's make some money. Good luck, everybody.